Hello everyone. So you already know what my title is. So I'm going to talk to you mainly about topics that I addressed in my doctoral thesis, which I conducted at the Lipid Lab at the Ecole Polytechnique Federale de Lausanne, so the EPFL, where I was supervised by Marilyn Anderson and Jan Wienold and funded by Vilux Stiftung, so I'm a Vilux uh, woman. <laughs> and uh, if I have the time at the end of the presentation, I will very briefly mention uh, my future research work um, areas uh, now as an assistant professor at the Human Technology Interaction Group at DUE. So the driving force behind my work is the question of whether the composition of daylight patterns can affect how we experience the space. And specifically, what happens when we're exposed to a pattern that is like the one on the left, so regular and man-made, compared to a light pattern that is complex and natural, like light filtered through leaves. And this particular topic is even more prevalent today due to the prevalence of complex facade patterns in contemporary architecture. And this is something that I'm sure you have seen around you. There is a growing trend in the use of these complex facade systems and perforated surfaces. So my question is, what do these facade designs, how do they impact humans? And specifically, what happens from the perspective of the occupant? So the core question of my work so far has been this. Can the facade geometry and the resulting daylight patterns impact human responses? And the literature tells us that we cannot answer this question without taking into account the space function. What are we doing in the space? Are we working? Are we socializing? And another important point is the regional differences. Does the opinion of people change between different continents or even different countries within the same region? So to answer these questions, I needed to do experiments with a wide range of facade and daylight variations. The problem with doing this kind of experiments in a real environment is, of course, that it's very difficult to control the facade design itself, and we cannot control the daylight. So if I found an effect, I wouldn't know if it is because of the facade that I changed or because of the lighting that was changing in the meantime. And this is why I'm in this session, because we decided to introduce the use of virtual reality as an experimental tool. Now, the core question now is whether we can use VR at all as a surrogate to real environments. And I won't go deeper into that, but I can tell you that we developed a workflow that allows the use of physically based renderings with radiance in immersive VR. And we validated this against real environments. And we found that the perceptual accuracy, the physical symptoms, and the sense of presence in the virtual space are really positive. And we proved that it's indeed uh, possible to use this instead of real spaces. So now we have the tool to use. And we set out to examine the subjective and physiological responses to facade and daylight patterns. This is a study I conducted with my colleague Georgia Kinato at the PFL, and we showed to 71 participants three facade geometry variations. All had the same perforation ratio, so the same amount of open to total surface area. And you see the far left is called irregular. It has rectangular openings distributed randomly. And then the middle one, called regular, has the exact same openings, but distributed on a grid. And then we have also horizontal blinds. All participants, so the three facade variations in random order. And then half of them were told to imagine that would be socializing in that space, and the other half that they would be working in that space. Let's see what happened. Ah, before that. In each scene, I asked how pleasant, how interesting, and how exciting is this space. And using an Empatica E4 bracelet, we measured the skin conductance. This is the amount of sweat on our skin, and also the heart rate of participants. We did the same also in a, a scene in the beginning of the experiment, so a neutral scene, to establish what is called a baseline measurement. So what is the physiological response of an individual in, um, with a neutral stimulus? So we found that the facade design has a significant effect in how pleasant, how interesting, and how exciting we perceive a space. So facade design matters. It's the exact same space. We also showed that the spatial context in this experiment had a significant effect. You, saw here the, you see here the results in gray for the working context are on average higher than those with blue and the social context. But nevertheless, in both, um, I should go back. It's a surprise. <laughs> uh, in both context scenarios, the irregular geometry had a significant effect 
on perception and was perceived more positively. Particularly when we compare it, I don't think there's a laser, to the regular facade variation, which means that the spatial distribution of facade openings also has a significant effect. Now, we didn't find a significant effect of facade geometry on skin conductance, but we did find a significant effect on heart rate. And specifically, when we compared the beginning of the experiment to the exposure of a participant to each scene, when participants were immersed to the irregular facade variation, the heart rate was lower compared to when they were exposed to the horizontal stripes. This might sound strange, but it's um, something that has been already um, been found in the literature of psychophysiology, and we know that uh, involuntary attention uh, is linked to heart rate deceleration. So this is probably what is, we see here. You see here that the trend for the uh, responses to how interesting is the space follows a similar trend to the heart rate deceleration because our vertical axis is always in the negative range. So after that, we set out to um, conduct an even um, bigger study, this time to also take into account the effect of latitude. So we, I uh, uh, replicated the exact same experiment using VR. So I had my VR headset and I went from country to country to Hanya um, in Greece and to Lausanne in Switzerland. And Claudia, who was just here before, repeated this experiment in Trondheim in Norway. But today I'm only going to focus on the ones with blue because this is the experiments I did myself. So let's see what the participants saw. Each participant saw six facade variations, which actually come from a survey uh, of architects about which facade variations would be most, most promising. We can discuss this later because it's another study. And they saw all six facades in random order. And all six have the exact same perforation ratio. And they come from existing buildings of contemporary architecture. So let's see them. I call them pattern one, two, three, four, five, and six. So all the six facade variations were shown, were, um, no, were seen by the same participant under one of the three possible sky types. A clear sky with a high sun angle, a clear sky with a low sun angle, and an overcast sky. And you see that these are common scenes with Claudia's experiment that you saw just before. Half of the participants were told to imagine they were socializing in the space, and we saw uh, furniture of a lounge, and the other half were told that they would be working in that space. And we showed furniture of an office space. And of course, the same experiment was repeated in Greece and in Switzerland. Now, this is how it looks like. Each participant explores the scene for 30 seconds in silence. And then after that, I'm asking a series of questions. The first four, they were shown in random, asked in random order, but the first four relate to the atmosphere of the space, so how pleasant, interesting, exciting, calming is the space, and the other four relate more to the visual appearance. How complex, how spacious, how bright is the space? How satisfied are you with the amount of view in the space? Let's see the results. So we found a significant effect of facade for each one of these questions. And also, we didn't see a significant effect of sky type in our experiment or a special context. It didn't matter if participants thought they would be working or socializing in the space. And there were also no differences between Greece and Switzerland. So this means that the facade geometry was the main driver of the responses from the factors we studied. And if we look a bit closer to the different responses, um, when we ask how pleasant and how calming the space is perceived, this facade variation, pattern three, led to the highest um, evaluations of the exact same space. And also that one, pattern six, is one of the most calming. No, one of the most pleasant. Now if we look at how interesting and how exciting the space is perceived, these two facade variations were the most interesting and the most exciting. An interesting point is that a facade variation that is the most interesting is not necessarily the most pleasant. Now, we know already that we found a significant effect of facade on how spacious, how bright the space is perceived, and also the level of satisfaction with the amount of view. This effect was driven by one single pattern, pattern four, with small rectangular openings that were randomly distributed. I'm sure you can guess that this has an effect 
on how we perceive the view out. And probably this is what drove the effect that we found, which was a significant decrease in all these evaluations, even though, of course, the space was equally spacious, equally bright, and we had the same amount of view in terms of perforation ratio. Another fascinating result was what happens when we change from straight vertical elements to slightly skewed vertical elements that we see here on the bottom. So this change led to a significant increase in how pleasant, how interesting, how exciting, and how calming the space is perceived. Even though in terms of geometry, there's a very, very, very small difference. So you know already from uh, Claudie's presentation that we had additional uh, scenes thrown in. So we know that these perceptual effects of facade do not change when we change the window size, do not change when we change the space at least for those that we tried. And we also didn't find an effect of sky type or of latitude. This means that the facade geometry is the main driver of spatial experience. Now, to conclude with uh, an overall summary, we found, um, we uh, saw a results of experiments with VR that were conducted uh, using a workflow that we developed and validated against real environments. Then we demonstrated for the first time that the facade geometry has a significant effect not only on the subjective responses, but also it has a quantifiable physiological effect on humans. And lastly, even seemingly small changes in the design of the fa facade sorry, <coughs> can have a strong effect on perception. And to finish with future work, of course, the next step is to replicate these experiments in a real space. And I'm also very curious to see what happens if we don't have a facade pattern, but only a light pattern. Because if we find comparable effects, this would mean that we could have applications, not only static and kinetic facades, but also in artificial lighting, for example, with dynamic lighting applications. And with this, I would like to thank you.